I believe as we come into this season and as prayerfully we get to herd immunity and restrictions begin to be lifted, I'm believing God for you, for CLM, for us at COTLE, and for all of our friends around the world, that there will be a fresh coming of the Holy Spirit to bring us into that glorious communion of the Father and the Son so that as persons, not as individuals, you know, the old song, just me and Jesus, we got a good thing going. No, no, it's never just you and Jesus. It's never what, what's, what's in it for you. It's what's in it for us as the family of God. It's what's in it for us on the journey to becoming human, the journey to becoming persons. And we're running against the tide and against the grain because we live in a culture where we're being encouraged to be individuals. And you can tell individualistic people because they prefer isolation and they want to control, they want to manipulate, they want to have it their way. They don't know how to lay their lives down for the sake of others. And beloved, I'm persuaded that as we move forward, God is sifting people in all sorts of ways in this shadow pandemic to expose false motives and to expose ways in which people try to control and to expose ways in which people want to have it their way because they prefer to be individuals than become persons. And I think God is weeding that out. I think it's a portion of God pruning the church right now and judging the church and exposing what's there that doesn't belong because God wants to form us as a family and fill us with his love, his passion, and with his breath so that we can live for one another. That you may with one accord, Paul says. That's homothumidum, rushing along in unison. Glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ accepted you, accept one another also, that you may with one accord, that you may with rushing along in unison, glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is not glorified when we behave like individuals. Pentecost came to deliver us from individualism and to fill us with a spirit of communion and community so that together we can embody Christ himself, incarnating Christ so that for us it's Orlando, for you it's Vancouver, but it doesn't stop there. That's your Jerusalem. Orlando is my Jerusalem. But we're called to take that love, that communion, that meaning of what it means to be persons that lay our lives down for one another in love. We're supposed to take that all around.